Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is former NFL running back, All-Pro, and an All-Pro insider on television as well for a very long time, Merrill Hodge. Merrill, nice to have you back on BYU Sports Nation. Good to be here with you guys. At this point, Merrill, do you own property in Provo yet with how many times you've visited? <laughs> yeah, I actually have a, a townhome I get to visit every now and then. <laughs> but Bo's taking that over. Okay, okay. What was your initial reaction to Bo's move to running back from quarterback? Well, I thought it was – actually, when he told me uh, – he just told me, well, first of all, he said he was a linebacker coach, uh, Ed Lamb, I think, uh, was going to meet with him. So when he came home, he called me up and said they want to think about moving me to running back. And I was like, well, that's stupid. Because I mean, I'm, I'm like, I thought he was messing with me. Yeah. And then when he, when he told me he was, uh, that it was for real, first I was like, well, what the, what would the linebacker coach be talking to you about that anyway? That was odd <laughs> to me. I was like, well, what? I mean, that just, that just sounds stupid right there. But I'm like, uh, yeah, that's why I thought he was playing with me. Then I was like, and they go, well, they just want me to look at it. And then I guess about a couple weeks before camp, they asked him to move permanently there. So when he called me up, I was just like, well, I go, what do you think? And he's like, he got me like, because I feel like I didn't come here to play quarterback. I mean, running back. I want to play quarterback. And I was like, well, uh, then what are you going to do? <laughs> he's like, well, he's going to go talk to him. So, you know, he went and talked to him, and, you know, that fell on deaf ears. And, um, in fact, it was, you know, kind of disturbing because they, they put him off for so long when he talked to him, which is, I just never heard something like that. You know, I just, just think it's weird, you know, that you do that. I, I mean, and they'll claim it's a, that they're maximizing his talent, but I'd claim it's a waste of talent. I don't think it's a smart move. And I don't know why the linebacker coach is even a part of the evaluation unless I'm missing something because he's the only one that seemed to know about it. He told Bo not to say anything. He said, then he said it in the public setting it was widely known then he said on social media it was it was obvious that he was going to move and Critchlow was going to be the the future of BYU and then when you realize that land recruited Critchlow then you start to smell it doesn't smell good you know coaches like that to me are weasels on staffs you don't have a staff member do that I don't know what part of the evaluation he's a part of but um Bo did exactly what um actually the only, he had actually the only option he had is really to do it you know, they didn't let him – they wouldn't let him come compete. And that, that probably shocked me more than anything. Sure. When he went in to talk to him, he said they wouldn't let him compete at it. And that was like – and before he went in there, he asked me about it. I said, Bo, in 44 years, I've never heard a coach not allow you to compete. I go, I, I just – I don't think that'll fly. I think they'll listen to that because, you know, he's so passionate about it. But they didn't want to listen to it, so – you know, it's really doing this where I've always felt. And I, I go back to my freshman year at Idaho State. Um, when I signed there, the head coach left. And even though the offensive coordinator really recruited me, and he was the next head coach, it didn't really affect me. But I was watching in the locker room, you know, all the juniors and seniors that, you know, really got taken advantage of based on that transition where they got left out of it. They weren't a part of the processing. And that's when I've always felt that, you know, college kids with contract with their scholarship, they should have clauses when they're recruited by a coach and that coach leaves, they should be able to leave with that restriction and not sit out. There's not, I, so I don't get the NCAA's punishment for that. The kid that did nothing wrong, the coaches uh, recruited you. Um, he has no obligation to you. Um, yet they have an obligation to the university. This doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. But it was unfortunate, unfortunately. But I mean, but Bo, you know, did what he—the only choice he had—go play running back. Well, from the the practices we've been able to see, he certainly looks the part and has done a really nice job. Has your opinion on the position switch changed at all now that he's kind of settled into that position? No, but Bo coach—I I coached Bo for his first seven years, and I tell people all the time he's my best linebacker. He was my best running back, but he was a freak at quarterback. Yeah. And I'm going to be, I'll be honest with you. I've never seen, I've seen a lot of people try to get their best athlete to play quarterback. You know, a lot of people are always trying to do that. That's where you want your best athlete. You don't want to take your best athlete away from there, especially when they have the skill set of quarterback that Bo has. I just, I've never seen it. This is as bizarre and smelly as anything I've ever never ever seen but um now i'm not shocked the bulls i'm good at running back i'm not shocked at that at all but um <laughs> uh, that that doesn't change my view or opinion on just 
what a dumb move I think it was. Merrill Hodge with us on BYU Sports Nation, former All-Pro NFL running back. His son, Bo, is now playing running back after the switch from quarterback. Uh, Merrill, I've been saying for the past few weeks that I would love to see Bo Hodge inside the 20 become BYU's quarterback specialist in the red zone because I think he is dynamic, and you have to respect his ability to throw the ball there and certainly his ability to run the ball. What would you think about him being, I don't know, kind of a Tim Tebow-esque at Florida inside the red zone quarterback for BYU? Well, yeah, that's, you know, that's actually to both credit what he's tried to do is take on a flash role, if you will. Um, you know, and that's what they talked to him about. Now, listen, they've said a lot of things and lived up to nothing. So, you know, I would say, I was like, be careful what they say and yeah. what they think and, you know, what they design. I know they designed something here just recently. And Bo, was, Bo called me up. He said, if you pull out our 12th grade youth football team, you'll find all these plays. He goes exactly what we did with with him actually in in youth football. So I don't know. You know, I just I, you know, coaches say a lot of things, you know, and I've I've and that's what I believe too. I mean, that would be really nice. That'd be really cool. But you know, I don't like gadget offenses. If you're already trying to create a bunch of gadgets, you know, yeah, obviously you're probably in trouble with your core. But um, to not use him in that in all those cap, in those abilities would be probably would be a mistake. But I I mean I wouldn't count on it. Merrill, what are your own expectations for Bo heading into this season? Well, listen, I, here's my expectation for Bo is to play as hard as he's always played. You know what? He committed to staying and playing for the team regardless of the circumstances. And my expectations are for Bo just to be happy. You know, I don't have any yardage expectations. You know, I was at the scrimmage. And I was watching him, and I'm watching him doing the little things other than catching the ball or running the ball. That, you know, that to me is not the most important thing. It's all the other things that I'm always – this is why I've always said Bo is one of the most instinctive players I've ever been around. He just has gifts you can't teach. And I was just watching how he did some blocking things, and he handled some stuff and helped out. And I'm like, I mean, a guy could play 10 years like that and still never understand how to do those things. And he was doing it. There was a bunch of pass plays and some blitzes, and I was like, that just – that is why he's just he's a special football player, and I've always loved watching him play. Yeah, and certainly the offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes, has pointed uh, that out by saying, look, he's, he's not afraid to do the dirty work. He is a very capable and willing blocker, and he's really good at it. So that goes along with what you've been saying. He, he's a versatile-type player. Now, that said, if he is indeed a running back first, what's the number one bit of advice you have given him or will give him about playing that position? Well, we, we talked about ball security, number one, you know, and then what I've taught the, when I, you know, when I first started coaching football, started coaching him, you know, it's all about playing with pad level, you know, same put, same shoulder, rising ball, all the fundamentals that go along with being a great runner. You know, I always talk to my youth. It doesn't matter what level I'm talking about or coaching. I always talk to our running backs. I go, you know, guys, we are not supposed to get hit. That is not, we are not, I mean, I understand we're a target, but we can't play like that. Don't let them hit us. Let's strike them. Let's be the striker. Don't let them be the striker. You know, because kids from youth football, they're like, well, they're supposed to tackle us. I'm like, no. Oh, they're supposed to try to tackle us. But no, we want to strike them. Don't let them tackle us. <laughs> so talking to him about talking, talking to him just about how you go uh, by, you know, really protecting yourself and being a good runner, being a guy that's hard to block, I mean, hard to tackle. You know, he's got great, great quickness and great speed. But those little things about the techniques, the pad level, using his flipper, um, deflecting um, tacklers, ball security, just all those kind of things we've been able to talk about. Merrill, you've obviously been around this game for a long time. In your experience, what is the key for a team like BYU to rebound coming off of last season's disappointing year? You know, that's an interesting question. You know, it's so much easier to talk about those terms in the NFL because, you know, the NFL is so evenly matched. You know, and I don't care if you're 0-8 and, and you're playing a team that's 8-0. In the NFL, it's still going to be a fist fight at the 50. Nothing's easy. You know, college is just so different. You know, you, you got really four of your five for your, four of your first five games. I mean, you're just outmatched. You know, now will Wisconsin be a top five team like they were when they came here? I'm, Probably maybe not, but they're not going to be spot, they're not going to be far far from that. Yeah, you know, Scott, I mean Washington and Cal and Arizona. Um, it's hard when you're outmanned, 
you know, um, it's, it's just hard to win games like that. You know, it takes obviously teams to win that. Now, their offensive philosophy, you know, I love it from a perspective of how it controls the tempo. But in college, controlling the tempo is not maybe the most important thing, especially if you're down by 14. <laughs> tempo doesn't matter now. You know, so it's um, that's what makes it tough. You know, and I, um, but I think that the way they're running their offense, you know, the way their defense looks, you have chances to be in games. But the problem is if you get down by 14, you're just not built to fight back from that. And, you know, in the NFL, it never kind of gets in those scenarios very much. That's why running the game ball is so important because you want to control the game. In college, because you're outmanned and it's another team is going to be so much better than you. It's hard, you know. I just, you know, that's the one tough thing that BYU has, especially with their their schedule coming up. You know, these teams are just outmatch them across the board. Merrill, we always enjoy talking to you, and uh, certainly appreciate the time and your busy schedule. And uh, yeah, thanks for the insight into Bo and uh, what his future is. And we look forward to talking to you again. All right, guys. I mean, hope that well, Eric Eric Clarity or Eric, whether there changes a little bit for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> thanks, Merrill. Good night. See you guys.